that I was trying hard to survive. The day that the net broke, I happened to be on the catwalk right there at Mitch Fan, and somebody says, the catwalk is falling, so I jumped up on the main cable. And then somebody said, no, the net broke down underneath, you know. So I ran down to Mitch Fan, and I looked down one of the holes that there was there, and there was a man hanging on to the steel, you know. So I, myself and some of the other boys got a long rope and lowered it down, pulled him up, and that was the last time I ever seen him. The survivors of accidents on the Golden Gate Bridge formed elite little clubs. What's the name of the club you belong to? Halfway to Hell Club. How do you get to be a member of that club? In order to be a member of that, you had to fall off the bridge, go get bridge and in the net. I ended up in the hospital for 12 weeks. Did you go back and work on the bridge? Yes. I wonder where all the boys and everything said uh, I'd lost my nerve. I would never be able to do it, see? So instead of going home the first day when I got out of the hospital, I went right out to that bridge and walked all over it. Today, for the 50th anniversary, the Golden Gate Bridge District awarded all the original workers, most of whom are now in their 80s, copies of the original $1,000 bond that it sold to pay for the bridge. The bridge cost $35 million. But there was so much reminiscing going on today that it inspired one of the wives to tell us her impression of today's celebration. I think it's absolutely marvelous for these old guys. They wanted to talk about this for 50 years. <laughs> they finally get a little recognition, would you believe? <laughs> to get a full appreciation of the bridge and the work these men did, we decided to go to the top. In time, the only practical way up and down this open skyscraper is by elevator. And it's a sensational ride. Now it's one thing to look at film of a sensational ride, and another thing to actually take it. I wasn't thinking today about the great view I was going to see or anything like that. My big concern was much more basic, how to keep from hyperventilating before I got to the top. The ride to the top seems to take forever. At the very least, feels like the longest five minutes of your life. I'm convinced that anyone who doesn't admit to being afraid here is either under heavy medication or is extremely nearsighted. Well, wow. that was um, all kinds of fun. Now, now where do we go? Up this way. Straight up here. After the elevator ride, you have to climb two ladders to make your way to the top and then go through a hatch cover. And then there's only one direction to go in. and 46 feet above the water, you feel every inch of it. You gain a whole new respect for the men who climbed up here in its unfinished state half a century ago. And you marvel at how some of them, after falling, had the courage to climb back on the bridge and finish their work. You can feel the strong gusts of wind and the tendency is to stick close to the railing. A rumor has it at one time we had an individual up here and he grabbed a hold of the rail so tight that it took about three people to get him off the rail and back into the elevator to get back down. The Golden Gate Bridge from this vantage point is majestic, but without a doubt dangerous looking as well. It's the kind of place that's nice to visit once, but I wouldn't want to work here. After you're up here for a while, you find out there's nothing to be afraid of. Your fear just melts away. In fact, this is the most breathtaking view I've ever seen, and I hope everyone gets a chance to come up and see it. On the Golden Gate Bridge, I'm Elaine Corral for Segment 2.